Hey everyone, Mo here, and before the video begins, I just want to let you guys know that my schedule has opened up for me to do coaching again. So if you're interested in private one-on-one -on -one coaching for me to help you, whether you're a newer player and you want to excel at the game very quickly and learn the fundamentals without developing any bad habits early, or if you're an experienced player who's already maybe platinum or diamond and you're top 1%, but you need some help filling in the gap to get you to that 0.01% to make you just some of the best of the best, then hit me up on Discord and I can get you in some private one-on-one -on -one coaching lessons to help you polish up any skills you want to refine and help you learn all of the secrets to becoming a top player. That's it. I hope you enjoy the video. Hey everybody, Mo here, and today I'm bringing you guys another Meta Monday. Uh, the meta hasn't shifted too much since last week. We have had basically two decks kind of extremely rise in popularity. So for this Meta Monday, I'm going to do things a little bit differently instead of going over each individual deck and what they do. I'm not really going to do that uh, because um, like most of these decks are the exact same as the last two weeks. Not really a huge shift in meta. So instead, I'm going to go through, look at the top eight decks in, uh, on ladder for you. And then I'm going to kind of talk about the two biggest um, like new decks on the scene. And then kind of give you guys the information that you should probably be playing these decks um, before um next week happens before it kind of gets super popular i guess uh just let you know that these decks are extremely strong and you can get huge advantage huge lp advantage if you learn to play these decks before everyone starts teching for them and before other people learn the matchup but before we get into the meta monday i wanted to remind you guys that 68 percent of the people that watch my videos aren't actually subscribed and my meta mondays are actually the biggest portion of my views every week um so every week i put out meta monday and then i usually put out you know three or four other videos and meta monday is always uh, almost always my best performing video so i appreciate you guys watching so the 68 percent you're probably part of that 68 percent so i'd appreciate if you guys that watch my meta mondays every single day if you could go ahead and click that subscribe button you're going to be here next week anyways you're going to watch it anyways you know might as well might as well help me out here get that notification so you can watch it as soon as it drops instead of a day after it drops or after you know anything like that might as well just get the notification that you that it drops immediately and start watching it so go and do me a favor click that subscribe button and let me know in the comments below what content you guys like to see i tried some different content last week i posted um a sandra video that's kind of supposed to be more of a funny video where i played thralls and then i called it like literal solitaire because everyone's calling thrall solitaire so what i did was i played thralls and then simultaneously was playing games of solitaire and was trying to see which one was harder and if i could actually beat a game of solitaire which i'm not going to spoil on how that video went but you should go and watch that if you enjoy content like that and as far as this week i have more funny videos i have a video of like you know guess what rank the person playing the the game is and stuff like that so if you're interested in these funny types of videos let me know but if you'd rather me just stick with deck guides and deck gameplay and stuff like that i'm also fine with that just let me know what you guys want so i can provide the content you guys want so uh without further ado let's jump into the meta monday so most popular deck thralls most played deck highest play rate 54 percent win rate deck's pretty good um again not gonna go over it too much it's the same deck we've talked about for a long time except with um, a little bit of debate basically the only thing i'll point out with this is not every deck plays avalanche if you look at the best um here we'll take these top five thralls players and see how many of them play avalanche that's the only thing i want to touch on for you know some 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 reasons of my own my own personal reasons let's see so we got we got five five people here i think i opened up somebody's twice oh no i didn't one two three four five okay so let's see what how are they playing for thralls here oh we can't okay i guess oh here we go 100 percent win rate in their last four thralls deck so they're playing one avalanche last 14 games with thralls 100 percent win rate but we see this uh, it's kind of sus anyways uh, i guess it's probably just this exact version is what it is it has 100 percent win rate let's see one avalanche what do you got here d dome what do you got? Where's your, where's, your, oh, do you not play Thralls anymore, D-Dome? D-Dome! What is this? Oh, it's a fake Thralls player. They don't even play Thralls. Okay, let's see if we can find a, a Thralls deck real quick. Oh, here we go. Thralls deck. Let's see. They got uh, one Avalanche. So we got two people on one Avalanche. What are you on here? Are you on three Avalanche? Oh, one Avalanche. Okay. Mr. Mr. Spetsky or spetzi i guess not really there's no k in there all right i'm not gonna scroll too far back i don't care that much up here it is cool let's see what are you on you're on two avalanche and push b who just hit rank one i think one avalanche okay so the consensus seems to be like play one avalanche just to have it um and then some people play two so 
there you go. People wondering what the correct or most played um, like ratio is for Avalanche. There you have it. Most people that do well play one Avalanche, just that way you could have it if you need it against aggro, uh, but usually not more than one. Second most played deck is Burn. Um, you know, it's still just Annie Jin. You play a bunch of Burn spells, nothing crazy about it. Um, number three is Annie Elite. This is kind of like a newer deck, I think. Is this the control version? Yeah. So this is kind of a newer deck. Play some Catalogs of Regrets, go hard. I think it was Baja was, yeah. Baja was doing really well with this over in EU. You see he has the second highest win rate with like insane amounts of games, like 58 games, like literally twice as many games as the highest person and still holding a 70% win rate. That's good. Uh-oh. Oh, what's this? Alan's playing LOR again? Hmm. Of course Alan play, comes back to play LOR and plays a fucking go hard deck. That's the most Alan thing I've ever heard in my life. So yeah, you have a bunch of really good EU players that absolutely love this deck. Um, so actually, I don't know if any of these... Yeah, not a single NA player. All of these are EU, 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 and then like one APEC. One APEC player, Mr. Uzi. So, yeah, deck, it only has a 50% win rate. I'm sure this deck isn't very easy to play. You see the top end of it, though. The top players have pretty good win rates with it. So, I haven't seen it too much in America's shard. I haven't seen it too much in NA, but I'm pretty sure this would just get farmed by NA. What are its worst matchups? Its worst matchups are Scouts, Poppy, um... Yeah, I think right now a lot of NA is just like demacia rally um and i don't think this deck does too well into thralls i would assume it doesn't do too well into thralls that's like all in a ladder is right now is like thralls and thralls rally and verbal fish which we'll get to um so riven fizz nothing too crazy here just otk deck play riven play fizz um play a bunch of pump spells win the game jace heimerdinger uh again nothing too new nothing too crazy you play hexac handler so this is on the uh tech style deck where you're playing you know three production surge hexac handler adaptatron remove your opponent's boards win with heimerdinger value noxus viego same deal as previously where you just you know play a regular ass uh mid-range deck and then you get big encroaching mist huge uh, legion deserters huge viego stuff like that um we have mono Sharima kind of coming back into the meta but not really um i think people were more or less just trying to see if it was still good or not it's okay into some of the really slow decks like you see here the jace hymer the noxus pnz noxus pnz the uh, slower version of bar demasi with the uh, uh, galio very slow version but it should be up here like really bad matchups for um bar the bard poppy jarvin yeah see bad matchup for them so it beats slow decks. Basically, it's just to test the water, see how slow the meta is. But I don't really think it's that slow. I think even Thralls kind of just outraces you. I think Thralls, maybe because if you this deck plays the... Do you play the Landmark Destroyer girl? Yeah, they play two uh, Naturalist. So maybe this deck beats Thralls if you have Naturalist, their um, like promising futures Thrall. But most Thralls players are probably just not going to overload on a one thrall without deny backup against landmark destruction so i don't see this beating thralls too often i'll have to ring in my thralls expert uh cameron thrall so uh we're gonna skip number eight here because it's the same noxus viego that was up here just with no katarina and we'll just go into ruben pile as the number eight so via felio zoe uh winding light wind condition yep this is basically this is just like a what am i special uh, I don't think he's on here. What am I hasn't really played too much here. But this is like a Brazilian and what am I special? Because those are the only types of people that play decks like this. It's literally just Brazilians and just Jordan. Um, so if those of you that don't know are unfamiliar with this concept, because I don't think this was in the top eight last week, it's basically just get a bunch of value early. So you get like Lunari Duskbringer, you know, Zana Urchin, draw some cards. Boom, boom, boom's very broken. You get Zoe, draw some cards. Of course, you have Ophelios to give you that early game value engine. And you just kind of control the board slowly. And then eventually you just get to this like turn uh, seven, sometimes turn six with the Duskbringer or a uh, Moonsilver. And you just play Winding Light and then overload your opponents with pressure. Because all of a sudden this is like, you know, a six, four overwhelm. Like this has big with overwhelm. You can make your flame chompers now have two power and maybe kill something. You know, you could potentially give your Vi overwhelm, which is super scary. So, um, the, and then on top of that, you're playing three Mystic Shots. Some people are playing like three Mystic Shots, three Get Excited. Um, I guess this guy's playing an Aftershock, but mostly it's three Mystic Shot, three Get Excited. So you eventually just whittle your opponent down a little bit at a time. You go in for a big hit, leave your opponent at like six HP, and then you either finish the game pretty soon after that, or you just go, okay, get excited, get excited, and they're dead. 
So very solid um, kind of value deck. As I, I don't know what you would call this. Maybe a value style deck. Uh, you know, it doesn't play too many invokes. Like this isn't playing um, Solari Priestess, not Lunari Priestess, no um, star shapings for healings, anything like that. The only invoke in the entire deck is uh, Celestial Trifecta, of course, outside of Zoe. Like you're not even playing Spacey Sketcher. Like literally zero invoke outside of the one of Celestial Trifecta. So there's no healing. You don't have any... Um, guiding touches so no healing no invoking outside of this one card it's just straight up i'm going to slowly you know, board trade you or control the game go to the late game and then or mid to late game slam down a winding light and then take over and burn you so that's uh that's basically for the top eight but the two decks i want to talk about here are going to be um two decks that are kind of popping up one is right here it should have drizzoth this uh up here yep drizzoth's right here 86 matches and has the same win rate as some of these guys but with almost three times four times the amount of games played as this guy so very good deck very good deck when piloted correctly um here's the thing though it has a 52 percent win rate and i know uh, um i've said previously things like oh well sometimes um you know not the greatest players or players that don't know how to pilot the deck well can bring down the win rate this deck is really hard to play so the good players on this deck easily have like 70% win rates, um, if not higher. They have like, I'm, I'm just going to go to Micah's profile here and see what his what his deck looks, looks like. Because I like using the, the goats of each, like look at this, 82% win rate in the last 20 games he's, or 17 games he's played with, with TF Nami. So let's look at his version. I like looking at the best players versions um and people that are really good with the deck to see what the optimal version is so he's put out a couple of meta takes on this i'd go follow him. i'm going to post his twitter down in, in the description below but he put out a kind of meta report on his deck showing like what the win percentages was of each deck or sorry of each card let me see if i can find that for you guys uh i'll probably cut this cut just cut straight to it if i can't find it um fast enough but it should be pretty soon he just posted it not too long ago so i'm hoping i can just kind of stumble upon it he also posted a lot of pictures of his cat okay here it is so he posted this picture of for those of you that don't know this is basically showing your average win rate of each card when drawn i believe um and how many copies of each card so he's showing that if you play two go hards it's actually better than no go hards and it's better than three go hards so Dex with two gohards actually has a 65% win rate. Um, so this says here average win rate is 54.5%. Of course, this was before I got more popular. Let's see, this was posted yeah, about two days ago. So it's gotten super highly played and kind of popped off since two days ago. But when it was just like one of those fewer people, the win rate was 55%. And so you can see here, it's already dropped. Um, you know, it was like 2% or something like that. So this is the deck list he's currently on. You can use this picture. Again, I'll link uh, link this, which will take you to his channel or his uh, Twitter. I would highly recommend you follow this guy. He does a lot of really good stats. He's a very knowledgeable guy in TCGs in general, but specifically LOR. So he's great. Um, this shows you um, all the stats for that stuff. So the reason this deck is so good is the same reason that Burblefish was good. So first off, it's the play cast change, right? So it used to be with Nami, if you played a fast speed or slow speed spell, the Nami buff wouldn't actually happen until that spell went off. So most of the time, if you played your Nami and your opponent tried to like vengeance it or kill it on the spot, it, they would usually get a lot of value out of that because the only way you could use Nami at that point was to have burst speed spells. So if you didn't just have a bunch of burst speed spells, then your Nami died, you didn't get too much value out of it. Now, if they try to kill your Nami, in response, you can play not only burst speed spells, but fast speed spells now. Because if you do something like a Vile Feast, or if you even glimpse your own Nami in response, like if you do something like, oh, they're going to vengeance my Nami, glimpse her, that right there lets the Nami buff go off because it, it, the play cast change coming back from the, you know, a couple patches ago made it to where Nami works as soon as you play the card and put it on the stack now. So that's one reason. Another reason is this stupid card, Shadow Isles Tellstones, where a lot of people, including myself, rated this card as really bad because, first of all, it's in Shadow Isles, which is just not a really good region. And second of all, the cards in it is not good in the slightest. Like, Crumble is a horrible card. Spirit's Journey is not the greatest card. It's not bad, 
but it's definitely never been main decked more than like a one of sometimes in niche deck builds and the mark of the isles if you're playing an aggro deck you don't want to spend two mana on mark of the isles you just want to play mark of the isles for one mana and if you're already playing three mark of the isles there's no aggro shadow isle deck that's like yeah man i really want to play five mark of the isles because whatever second region your aggro shadow isles deck is in probably just has a better pump spell for two mana like for example if you're playing noxus um ionia you'd rather just play twin disciplines because that gives you the same power but the same power for the same mana except twin disciplines is more flexible if you're playing shadow isles noxus you play brothers bond it gives you more damage um and it can spread it across and for the same mana stuff like that so there's no reason to play this card in really any noxus deck um but in verbal fish this turns into two mana um what is it plus two four six it's two mana plus six power onto a unit which is absolutely absurd um at burst speed by the way like before your opponent can react to anything it's two mana plus six power so wiggly burble fish having a pretty decent hits and shadow isles is really good being able to play vengeance is really good it helps you against the big mid-range decks being able to play ruination is really good against the big mid-range decks um i know for a while he was on a one of a uh, harrowing so you could go like ruination and then harrowing and then you immediately have your board again um with your nami is going to be always your biggest unit so you play nami and then with harrowing it brings back your nami and then just all of your elusives and then you say okay throw my elusives at you again answered prayer is good but holy shit is tentacle smash just absolutely a broken card so this uh, is a deck that plays very few units they're all really elusive outside of um coral creatures and it also gets to play more units thanks to things like vile feast double trouble and then now with things like uh eye of nagakaboru's tentacle smash and answered prayer you get to play more units when they're actually spells and that is absolutely broken for nami i remember when this was shown michael was so excited and he was just like yeah like nami's back and he was just like on so much copium or what we thought was like copium at the time he was like no nah, no nah, this is like good he's like you just play all of these like spawn spells and you get to play units but also their spells so they count for nami and it's cracked so and he just wasn't wrong, obviously. This deck is really good. So deck's hard to play, um, but highly recommend you picking up and learning it. I don't know, but I know he's talked about maybe putting out a guide for it. So we can hope he does. Go follow him on Twitter. So that way, if he does put out a guide for the deck, you can get it and know how to play the deck well. I haven't played this deck once. I haven't tried to, but I'm going to try to because it's very strong. And in tournaments, I think this plus the second deck I'm about to talk to is a very strong lineup. You play um, Nami TF Shadow Isles, plus Bard uh, Demacia X, and that is a very strong lineup. Which brings us to the other deck we're going to talk about. I'm going to kind of go over it quickly um, because, you know, this video is already like 20 minutes long. So Bard Demacia, and this is not the same Bard Demacia that I made a video on last week or that we talked about previously where it was Bard Galio. So Bard Galio kind of made a splash as like, you know, top five most played, had a pretty good win rate last week. Uh, but if you saw this week, it wasn't even on the top eight. And if you saw my video last week, I did a try hard session where I had a 50% win rate over, I think it was like six games or something. I played for an hour, had 50% win rate. And the deck never felt bad. It just felt like I kind of got unlucky. But then I played more and I realized like, hmm, it wasn't necessarily as unlucky as much as the deck is just clunky. Like you just play too many expensive units. You don't play too many low cost units. Um, so there were a lot of hands where like I could have smoked aggro if I had a better hand, but instead I drew like Galios and then I drew like Concerted Strikes and drew like these other like really big cards that didn't really help me out. So if you look at this deck, the first thing you notice is it's very low to the ground. And that's why you play Poppy Jarvan. Prodigy had a very good explanation on this over um, Discord when I was talking to him about the deck and he was explaining to me why it works. Um, and he basically just said he wanted to take out all the expensive, clunky, slow cards, put in some better, you know, bigger cards, or sorry, some better, uh, more impactful, like cheap cards. And then he was like, well, if I'm already going this low to the ground with like nine one drops and a bunch of two drops, like, why not just play Poppy? You know, because you're already playing all these cheap units and rallies. Like, you might as well just play Poppy in here. So then he threw in a Poppy, and then he threw in a 1 of Jarvan, because Jarvan single-handedly, he kept noticing, oh, I lose to, like, bigger Demacia decks like Dragons. Oh, I lose to Mono Viego. Oh, I lose to, like, you know, these specific matchups. And he realized that Jarvan just beats all of those bad matchups. And this is what, like, 
uh, excellent deck building looks like. This is, uh, like excellent deck building isn't oh I put a one of judgment in because I'm playing closed deck list and I might get my uh, like Demacia opponents every once in a while. No, it's I'm playing this one of Jarvan because it's going to be always good when I have it. And then not only that, but in the bad matchups, it actually flips those around and helps me. It's not a gotcha mechanic. It's not a you know I have to hold open eight mana for my opponent to open a pass or uh, attack into me and not read it stuff like that. It's very much just a good card that your opponent can't really play around or has to be forced to play around all the time once you get to six mana. And that's what good deck building looks like. And I highly praise Prodigy for this because this is an amazing deck. The only thing I would like to see is a one of single combat in here somewhere because there are plenty of times where I wish I had single combat. But I'm not really a deck builder, so I don't know where I would go to put that in. I would say maybe you take out an Aegis, but then you're like, um, slower matchups get worse. Like your Sun Disc matchup gets worse. Your uh, Thralls matchups gets worse because you don't have rallies. So I'm not really sure where, but I would like to see one of single combat in here somewhere. But yeah, this deck is absolutely insane. I just hit Masters with this. Um, literally, I, I said this in my video last week after I played Bard Galio. I was talking to my friends and then Prodigy was like, hey, try out this other Bard Demacia deck. And I tried it out and I just hit Masters with an 80% win rate over like 35 games or something like that. I went literally from Plat 1 to Masters in... I think it was like two hours and I had an 80% win rate over 30 something games. It was, it was pretty sick. So this deck is absolutely super strong, super insane. Um, it's very much just kind of like an low to the ground Demacia deck. Like you play challenger unit, so you control the board and then you slam down Bannermans or you slam down a Poppy and you just say like, okay, opponent deal with this, like, you know, like always growing board that's going to be wider than you. And then, oh, also I have challengers, so I get to choose exactly how everyone trades. Oh, also I have chimes in my deck. So these units are randomly getting bigger. Like my two, four here is like randomly sometimes going to be a three, five, or I had a game today where I randomly had like a six power. Um, I was turn three and I had a six power uh, Petrocyte Broadwing. It was like a two, six or something like that. So it was like, like how is that fair ever you know um and stuff like you just get these random high roll times and then also this deck smokes aggro which is like something that i was super happy about because aggro is very up here we saw it was like the second most played deck here right or really the third most played but it's still up there in play rate but literally look over here it has a 16 percent win rate against um has a 16 percent win rate against uh bard poppy J4 because you play nine one drops like you play nine one drops you play a shit ton of two drops like look at this nine one drops you play three six seven eight almost nine two drops right you play six two drops or sorry eight two drops here one of them is petrocyte broadwing which is like cheating because you essentially get to kill two units with it and then you play three drops so it's like and then your three drop like is a two four so it double trades again with aggro and it just makes it super easy to just run aggro out of cards i've literally lost the aggro matchup one time against and it was against henneke who's an amazing player and the only reason i lost was because my opening hand after a full mulligan was literally a two it was a two drop no it was a one drop two drop and then bard 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 poppy like those were my draws that was my hand and even in that game, I shit you not, I had him beat if he didn't top deck, um, what was it? Uh, the Noxian Fervor. He didn't top deck it, but he had Noxian Fervor. Um, and so if I would have drawn a Concerted Strike, I actually just beat this aggro player when my hand, my opening hand is Bard, 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 Poppy. Like, that's how absolutely insane this deck is into aggro. So extremely strong deck um, really good and i think that's going to make an extremely strong lineup for those of you that play tournaments is the uh tf nami shadow isles burble fish deck you play bard demacia with poppy and the one of jarvan and you play any other third extremely strong deck like you could play thralls you could play pantheon you could play like so many other third just powerhouse decks right there like noxus viego right and then you have an extremely powerful just tier one lineup so that's going to be it for this Meta Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would heavily decide if I were you guys to play those two uh, decks of Tryout Poppy Bar. This deck is much easier. The Poppy uh, Bar Jarvan deck is much easier to play than the Ban uh, Burble Fish deck. But I would highly recommend you start learning that Burble Fish deck. Because unless that thing gets nerfed next patch, which it shouldn't because it kind of just popped up recently. 
we're gonna be in for a, a fucking ride for the next couple of months. I'm like Drizzle tweeted, here, I'll save you guys some headache. Just take this core at any other region, and there you go, you have a good deck. And it was literally just like all of the bilge water package from like TF, Nami, Burblefish, uh, Shelly, like um all of the spawn spell stuff like that and he goes just add any other region and then you have a very solid tier two deck so like this deck is sticking around for at, at least the rest of the season here so highly recommend you start learning that hopefully drizzoth puts out a, a, a guide on that or i'll put out a guide on that after talking with him i'll let him show me and then if he doesn't decide to put a guide out on it i'll do it i don't do it first because i kind of just hose this guy who created this deck and it's kind of like his child so i don't want to just take that away from him i'll let him do it first and then if he doesn't end up doing then i'll go ahead and make it for you guys so that's gonna be it for this meta monday i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys are doing well on ladder get, getting that LP, early lp for seasonals so that's going to be it for me. Make sure to follow, subscribe, uh, leave a comment down below letting me know what decks you've been playing on ladder as well as what type of videos you want to see from me in the future. And then type in the comments, you know, type a type of Brad, just type Brad in the comment if you've made it this far. So that's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.